Asante sana kwa kuja kujumui kan <laughs> I'm trying. Kujumui ka nasi. <laughs> this is a key milestone for UNDP and our partners, which we believe will have significant impact on the development agenda of the country. Ladies and gentlemen, the speed and complexity of today's challenges are different from previous eras in history, requiring an equally sophisticated range of development solutions to tackle the complex problems and make faster progress on the sustainable development goals. Ladies and gentlemen, I think you're all asking, so what is this Accelerator Lab and why is it here? And I think my colleague mentioned it before. The Accelerator Lab is UNDP's global investment in innovation, which aims to find locally innovative development solutions, test them, broaden their potentials, and scale them up to address the widening gap between our aspirations in the sustainable development goals and the realities on the ground. You will hear such words as um, sense making, experimentation, uh, and other very complicated words, but the whole idea is finding what works already locally, but also beyond the local, and trying it out, testing it, and finding ways of scaling it up so that it reaches every user uh, who needs it. But there's a process there that requires facilitation. يسرني أن أقدم الكلمة الافتتاحية لهذه المبادرة الهامة لإطلاق مختبر التسريع الإنمائي لبرنامج الأمم المتحدة في جمهورية تنزانيا. وفي هذا الصدد أود أن أهني برنامج الأمم المتحدة الإنمائي على إنشاء هذه المختبرات المعجلة حيث أنها ستساعد على تسريع ما تم ابتكاره في شتى المجالات الأخرى. I'm pleased to give the opening remarks for the important initiative. to launch the UNDP Accelerator Lab in the United Republic of Tanzania. Innovation has been central to Qatar's accelerated development in the past few decades, and, and we are pleased to be part of, the, of this global movement to harness the power of innovation in addressing ever increasing and complex challenge in our world today. By establishing the Accelerator Lab, uh, which will promote innovative solutions to tackle the development challenges we are facing, UNDP has, put, uh, has proven um, once again that it's very important uh, partner and true friend indeed uh, for Tanzania. And uh, on behalf of COSTEC, I say thank you for partnership that we have all enjoyed for many decades. Um, we look forward to working together even more closely as you start a new journey with uh, Accelerator Lab. I think I've heard this twice today in the room, um, that young people are the innovators, right? And so how do we demystify innovation so that our elders get it? <laughs> I, that's good, wow. Um, <laughs> throw that to me. Um, I think demystifying innovation, right, has to, has to be an approach that, that has to come from both sides. Um, so the enablers, um, as, as Marjolaine um, called them, have a huge um, task and responsibility to find ways to get even the youth themselves to demystify what innovation means. I think, um, 
when you think of um, who started to, to plant this seed of innovation in Tanzania, I have to say, in one of the government bodies that has done wonderful is Costec. Costec started um, properly incubating innovation ideas from a certain generation, I'm sure it's the young ones. And we started with uh, giving them space, free access to the internet and some of the facilities. We designed this very nice ground floor space for them and they were free to come and go as they please. They would even stay up at night. If we are into a living lab approach, right, we need to engage every actor that we need to thrive innovation. And I think we should not be afraid to regulate already something before we understand something. So I think that the joint learning and bring in government, bring in uh, private sector, bring in NGOs, everybody in this ecosystem who we actually need to support innovation, bring them in this living lab. And I think a very good approach would be also uh, working with LGAs, actually working with local governments to start with. And the learnings of LGAs can be very powerful to actually, you know, bring upward again and say like, hey, this is what we've seen. We've been part of prepaid water systems, for example, where we see like, hey, there's a very clear revenue system coming up, but who will do the pre-investment? There is some issues around regulatory framework if you look at digitalization of water supply. How do we solve that? So we kind of have a debate and a dialogue and that can influence regulatory frameworks and policies. Rather than already trying to do that beforehand, do that on the way, make mistakes, see how it works and then find out together because it's a journey and, and it's new for everybody. So uh, yeah, that would be my ambition. We've had the very many hubs that have started and the ones that have closed out and the innovations that have started and have closed out, right? So there's no dancing going on. Um, how do you recreate and sustain the dance? Um, so this is something I'm opening up to the floor to hear from you guys. How do you think we can sustain um, innovation um, here in Tanzania? Uh, I think there is a need to change the way um, the traditional organizations are actually also bringing products and services to the market. The, the question I would actually ask uh, to, to all the donor agencies, probably um, the uh, players in the market, how does, how does this innovation actually affect the, the real economy, the real sector? You know, when, when you talk about innovation, it needs to start with the need. And sometimes you, 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 you identify that need and you create a solution around it. But uh, it, it's not only, the moment startups start looking at it as they exist in an ecosystem. You know, there's, there's this great zoo of different players that offer different services in the market. And one of the areas that, uh, you know, the facilitators can help is to say, how do we help this startup to connect with that financial sector or with uh, that value chain so that they can connect the movement of goods and services. How do they say that, you know, instead of helping me find that next dollar to invest in my company, can you find help me find that next client and create value to that client? Because if I make that client happy, I'm actually connecting the ecosystem and I'm enabling even other players to be able to play in the system. We are in the business of building African businesses that will lead Africa into the next frontier. The innovation is the secret sauce, but the business is the one that sustains. We fund innovators and great ideas, but we do not teach these young people how to build lucrative businesses. What is valuation? What is the bottom line? What does your triple bottom line look like? How do you hire strategically? How do you fire strategically? Right? How do you partner well? How do you forecast? What kind of data works for you? Those are things we need to be teaching young people. And it cannot be done in a one-day training or two-day training. This is MBA level learning. And that's what we have to foster. We have to foster a culture of learning in innovators. To say that, yes, you are great. You know how to do this. Well, you can turn plastic into bricks. Amazing. But bring me the numbers. Investors look at numbers. In Africa growing, it is the numbers that we need to play with. So we need to stop talking about, oh, we're going to finance. They, they have a great idea. Beautiful. 
But we have to think about how do we build businesses that revolutionize Africa as a whole. Um, so as we think and talk innovations, I think we may want to not limit ourselves in terms of, uh, um, because currently we think in terms of individuals and companies uh, coming up with innovative products and bringing it into the market and trying to get support so that these products can, can fly out. But, but there are many, kind of, you know, many kinds of innovations because that's, that's only product innovation. But how about process innovation? How about thinking in terms of um, helping, say, a government institution or any other institution out there to improve its process uh, and maybe uh, shorten the amount of days and maybe the, the amount of uh, resources that it is using so that it can save on costs or so that the, the services to end users can come up fast. So I think as, as we continue thinking innovations and trying to support and help innovation ecosystem, we shouldn't limit ourselves in terms of uh, just one type of innovation, product innovation. It should be very wide and think of it in terms of uh, different possibilities which are associated with innovation in order to take this country forward. If we're preparing for the future of innovation, if we're preparing for unlocking um, the change potential and the creative potential um, towards the fourth industrial revolution, we've been talking about this over the past, past couple of months more often, let's make sure that this happens in an inclusive way, right? Let's make sure that no one is left behind. Um, things are happening so fast and new skills are being needed, so let's make sure that we can really allow as many people at least as possible to really participate um, in, in this innovation journey um, that we're all working on. Yeah, thank you. So the Global Initiative, which was uh, done under UNESCO umbrella, and Sarah is here, she has been involved in this work, has demonstrated that you can improve teaching by just giving a tablet to a child without a teacher. 60% of them manage to know how to read and write.